So this is the last lecture in Unit 5. It's the last lecture in the course. We're talking about the standard model of elementary particles. And uh, this is a, um, a pretty heavy topic. Um, a lot of this will be new to you. Um, there are, I want you to, as well as listen to this lecture, I want you to read the entire section 12.6 from your textbook. And um, I want you to uh, um, complete uh, um, some of the additional assignments that I'll be mentioning um, uh, throughout this lecture. And I'll mention them again at the end of this lecture. Um, uh, because I think those will, will help you in your understanding uh, in order to prepare for um, the test for this section of the unit and uh, for the final exam. So the standard model of elementary particles. Um, now, the first statement on, on here says, uh, in science, some advances happen when old ideas generate new thinking. Other innovations occur because the new ideas force the old ones to be discarded. So this, <clears throat> this is actually a pretty small uh, lecture in terms of what you have to read here. Um, but the topics are pretty large. So um, in this, uh, uh, in section 12.6 from your textbook, they kind of give um, these, these different kind of ideas of uh, things that we've, uh, that have changed, our understandings that have changed in science. Uh, one of them, of course, is how we understand the atom. And um, uh, it depends on uh, uh, sort of when you were educated. In your sense, you might, um, uh, you might have moved past this, but the way that the atom was taught previously um, was this idea of a, of a planetary model where the nucleus is almost like the sun in a solar system and the electrons are like the planets that orbit around. Um, there were some problems with this and uh, uh, they're corrected uh, by the Bohr model. So Rutherford was the, the original discoverer of the nucleus, and he gave this, this planetary system idea of, um, uh, of atoms orbiting around a nucleus. Uh, the Bohr model sort of replaced this with um, a different kind of, an understanding of different energy levels, and uh, an understanding of rather than orbits, uh, circular orbits, more like, um, like shell energy levels. So an electron um, orbits around a nucleus at a certain energy level away from that, uh, uh, that uh, the center of the nucleus. So this is, an under this is how our understanding of the atom changed. And um, that's one example. But we're going to talk a bit more about some of the others uh, with um, our understanding of physics now, um, we know that uh, um, the nucleus of an atom contains other particles as well. Um, and those particles that are in that nucleus uh, can be broken up into even further particles. And, and this goes back to the, the, the atom. The word atom was originally a Greek word meaning indivisible. So an atom was thought to be the building block of matter. Everything was made up of atoms, which is true. However, uh, or not, I should say, not everything is made up of atoms. Everything that we see in the macro world is made up of atoms. But when we dig a little deeper, we can see that atoms themselves can be divided into um, electrons, protons, and neutrons. Then we realize that you can break up the protons and the neutrons even further into other particles, which we'll get into a bit later. So there's actually subatomic particles, uh, protons, neutrons, and electrons. And then there are um, uh, particles that are even smaller uh, than the protons and the neutrons. Then now, now there's the other idea that we have things that are called antimatter. So antimatter uh, is particles of matter that have the same mass but opposite charge of the corresponding particle of ordinary matter. The one we've talked about was the positron, which is essentially an electron with a positive charge. It has the same mass as an electron 
and it has the elementary charge of an electron. Although the electron's elementary charge is negative, the positron's elementary charge is positive. So matter uh, is the, is the, there's more matter than antimatter, and we interact with matter um, every day. Um, antimatter, uh, there's not a lot of it. And in fact, uh, we'll talk about some things that exist with antimatter, but uh, um, every, uh, every particle of matter that we know of has an antimatter particle as well. So the positron and the electron we also have the proton and the antiproton, the neutron and the antineutron. Now the interesting thing about antimatter is it is exactly alike, um, or sorry, it's, it's exactly the same as regular matter. The, the difference is that um, uh, because we, uh, um, because every, everything is kind of f swapped in terms of um, how its charge is, uh, um, it doesn't interact with our matter the same way. So I should take a brief period here to stop and, and, and talk about dark matter as well because uh, there is a difference between antimatter and dark matter. Dark matter is matter that does not interact uh, electromagnetically. So uh, we know that light is an electromagnetic a form of electromagnetic radiation. That means that dark matter um, cannot be seen uh, um, the same way as you can see uh, regular matter, or even antimatter for that case. The, the, the other thing about dark matter, the reason why we know it exists though, because if we can't see it, that, that would be pretty odd that we can say it exists, we can, we can observe its gravitational interaction. So dark matter does not interact electromagnetically, but it does interact gravitationally. So that is dark matter. That's not a part of this course. What you need to understand is the terms antimatter and dark matter are not interchangeable. They are talking about different things, very different in terms of how we observe them and how we interact with them. So now we get to the standard model. And what we call the standard model uh, or, uh, is really the, it's the uh, current theory of particle physics. Um, and it predicts the nature uh, of, of physics. And it talks about uh, how each of these particles that we talk about, it consists of other particles. So um, with particle physics, we have the smallest uh, uh, kind of particles are bosons and uh, quarks uh, and leptons. Um, or I guess you can say we have uh, bosons and fermions because quarks and leptons are fermions. Those are the, uh, the, the, the smallest things that we have, the smallest particles we have. The bosons mediate fundamental forces, uh, whereas the, uh, the fermions um, combine um, uh, to create uh, particles of matter uh, that are larger, like hadrons, or the leptons, um, like electrons and neutrinos, uh, which interact with that matter as well. Um, so I'm going to uh, uh, show you uh, a, a, a pic, I guess not a picture here, but I'm going to show you a, a flowchart that describes this um, a bit better. So this here is the standard model um, of elementary particles. And what we have here is um, it kind of breaks down each of these particles. So I'm going to talk through this. And the way this is read, you'll, you'll have this sheet um, on the website. But the way this is read is actually kind of, uh, this sheet kind of is read from the top down and from the bottom up. So at the top we have fermions. And at the bottom we have bosons. And of course, uh, um, as we read this, we're going to get to a point where there's um, uh, 
where there's an interaction between the two. So fermions um, are fundamental particles that form matter or antimatter. So the examples we have are the quarks and the antiquarks um, and the leptons and the antileptons. Now that breaks us up into quarks and antiquarks uh, and leptons and antileptons. So for our quarks, uh, quarks are um, particles that can only exist in pairs or triplets. And there are six of them. There's the up, down, charm, strange, top, and bottom quarks. And then we have the six antiquarks, which are anti-up, anti-down, anti-charm, anti-strange, anti-top, and anti-bottom. And then the leptons, um, we have, uh, these are elementary particles that can exist alone. So a quark uh, can only exist in a, in, in a, uh, a triplet or in a pair. Uh, leptons can exist on their own. And these ones, we have the electron, which is the one you're most familiar with. Uh, we have the different neutrinos, um, and we have the muon and the tau particles as well. Um, now, I'm going to stop from this side of the fermions. We're going to go down to the bosons. So what a boson is, it's a particle that transmits forces or it uh, uh, provides interactions between matter. Uh, so there are elementary bosons and there are composite bosons. Now, if we go on to the elementary boson side over here, um, <clears throat> these are bosons that are indivisible. Um, so we have scalar bosons and vector bosons. So this is a little bit different from what you'll see in your textbook because since your textbook has been published, our understanding of physics has changed. And I'll, I'll talk about that. Uh, it's mainly with these scalar bosons, which we, uh, at the time your textbook was written, were only hypothesized. So the vector bosons are the particles that transmit forces. The photon is the one you're most familiar with. Uh, we also have the, uh, the W bosons, the Z boson, and the gluons. There is a hypothetical um, uh, graviton that is a gravity force transmitter boson. Um, we haven't proven that it exists. Uh, so that's, that's uh, hypothetical at this point. But the photon is our electromagnetic force transmitter. The gluons are the strong nuclear force transmitter. And the W and Z uh, bosons are the um, uh, weak nuclear force transmitters. Now the scalar boson is the, new, the newest particle here. And the scalar boson... It is a particle that provides mass to other particles. And there's only one that we know of. It's the Higgs boson. And uh, this, was, uh, um, this was a hypothesized particle for quite a bit of time, most of your lifetime. Um, it was only proven uh, in uh, 2018, I believe, um, at, through experiments done at the uh, um, Large Hadron Collider, um, which is a uh, uh, which is a uh, facility that co collides hadrons together, speeds up hadrons, and has them have high energy collisions. Um, and uh, during um, uh, some experiments, they ended up uh, proving that um, uh, that the um, the Higgs boson actually did exist. Uh, so this again was done at um, uh, uh, at CERN, which is the um, European Organization for Nuclear Research, and it was uh, an experiment called the Large Hadron Collider. So you can look that up if you're interested. So that's the those are the elementary bosons. Um, there's also the composite bosons. So these are bosons that are composed of quarks or antiquarks. Um, now, a composite boson, uh, the ones that we're most familiar with are the mesons. Uh, but there are other nuclei of certain, um, uh, certain atoms also classify as bosons as well. So at this point, I want to go back to the top um, and discuss um, 
hadrons. So we've talked about um, fermions, we've talked about bosons. Um, there is another uh, type of particle that's that's one of the standard models, uh, uh, the standard model, and that's the hadron. So hadrons, fermions, and bosons um, are the main particle types that that form the standard model. Now hadrons are made up of quarks. So they're made up of two or three quarks. And with a hadron, uh, if it contains three quarks, it's called a baryon. And if it contains two quarks, it's called a meson. And we talked about mesons a little bit before, so we're going to get back into that in a second. Um, but first, let's talk about the baryons, because baryons are, um, this is the most of the matter you're going intera to interact with is a baryon. And uh, they are particles that are composed of three quarks, of course. Um, the most common ones are the protons and the neutrons. Uh, but uh, you also have uh, a few others. Um, uh, there's the different sigma baryons. There's the xi baryon. Um, you really don't need to know a lot of those, aside from the fact that a proton and a neutron are a baryon. Um, the antimatter versions of these are also baryons as well. So we have antiprotons and antineutrons. Those are baryons. Now, the other type of hadron is a meson. And mesons are particles that um, they are they consist of two quarks, but it's always a quark and an antiquark. And mesons don't exist for very long; they decay quite rapidly. And when they decay, they become either leptons or antileptons, or they become other bosons. And they could be either composite bosons or or elementary bosons. So two examples here are the pion and the, and the pi zero meson, uh, but there are many others. Um, what you see in this dashed line is what they decay into. So the meson can decay into a lepton, like an electron, or a neutrino, or something, uh, uh, something else. They can also decay into other bosons, which could be mesons, which then decay again, or they could be um, elementary bosons, uh, like the photon. So this is the standard model of elementary particles. You, you would need to understand this. I know it's quite complicated, but uh, this chart kind of helps you understand the different terms. Um, uh, if you have any trouble, of course, just let me know, and I'll, I'll try to help, understand, uh, help you understand it a, uh, in a different way. Um, for now, we're going to go back to uh, our main lecture slide uh, and continue on. So we have now uh, the theory of everything. And what the theory of everything is looking at is uh, um, it's an attempt <clears throat> to explain all of our understanding of physics, including quantum mechanics, the theory of relativity, uh, and the interaction of, uh, uh, of the different forces um, in such a way that the equations we use can work both in the macroscopic level and in the quantum level. Right now, um, we have equations for quantum mechanics and we have equations for, um, uh, I guess, macro mechanics. But we don't have a unified theory. Now this is actually um, uh, one of the big problems in physics right now. Uh, it may not be solved for a long time. Uh, the idea is once we have uh, an understanding of how everything interacts, we could have just one set of equations um, to do math and to do the physics for all different types of particles. And when it comes to particles that are moving at non-relativistic speeds, the relativistic factors would end up um, uh, having no effect. When it comes to particles that have um, relativistic effects, um, those equations would work for that as well. It would also connect um, the different types of forces um, so that we could understand what causes gravity, 
um, how gravity interacts with the other forces, what causes matter to come into existence, um, everything about how quarks interact, um, and other small particles like leptons. Uh, so this is our grand theory of everything that is that, that physics is trying to solve. Um, now, actually, I should go back. There is a, something else I'd like to do. Uh, there are some parts of our um, textbook that I want you to copy out. So, um, for now, I'm going to pull up Um, some tables from our textbook and what these are um, I'll talk about each table and why it's important so I want you have these in your textbook but uh, I think it'd be good for you to just copy this out in a separate note as well so each of these tables um, <clears throat> what you do not need to copy down though would be the mass in mega electron volts per uh, per C squared so for this table it talks about the um, uh, the different atomic particles and the antiparticles. So we have the electron, the positron. Uh, it gives their symbols as well. Um, we have the proton and the antiproton, the neutron and the antineutron. What you can note here is that um, uh, the mass of each is the same, whether it is a uh, um, piece of matter or a piece of antimatter. Uh, the charge is different. Now you might know why is there a neutron and an antineutron if they have the same mass and the same charge? Well, uh, the reason why is because a neutron um, is made up of three quarks. It's made up of an up, down, down quark. An antineutron is made up of three quarks as well, but it's made up of antiquarks, not regular quarks. It's made of an anti-up, anti-down, anti-down. So that's why we have a, a different, uh, we have a neutron and we have an antineutron. So they're made up of different matter particles. One is made up of matter, one is made up of antimatter. Uh, another slide I'd like you to copy down is this one here. This talks about the different types of quarks. And for this one, again, I, you don't need to copy down the mass. So you would just need to copy down uh, the type of quark the symbol, the quark charge, the antiquark, and the antiquark charge. Now what you notice here is that the quark's charges are fractions, and they're all fractions of three. When you combine them together, um, you will have a, uh, a charge that is um, uh, that's based on uh, the sum of the thirds of an elementary charge. And the six quarks are the up, down, charm, strange, top, and bottom quarks. There are other properties of these that you won't need to know, um, like color and spin. Uh, you'll learn that uh, in your future university physics courses. Uh, but please copy down the list, this list of the six quarks, their symbols, um, their charge, uh, the antiquark symbols, and the antiquark charge. And then the last two um, that I would like you to copy down are tables six and seven. So um, these tables here list the fermions and the bosons. So for our fermions, um, uh, we have, uh, um, or sorry, I guess I should say this is only the leptons. So we have fermions, which are quarks and, and leptons. Um, so we've talked about the quarks, so now let's talk about the leptons. And the leptons that we have are the electron, uh, the muon, and the tau. Uh, and then we have the electron neutrino, the muon neutrino, and the tau neutrino. Uh, and then again, we have the, uh, the quarks that are listed there, up, down, charm, strange, top, and bottom. So write down the charge of each of the electrons and the neutrinos. Um, you would note that uh, a, a, an electron neutrino, it's essentially an electron with a charge of zero. So it's neutral. That's where the neutrino comes from. Uh, this is the same for the muon neutrino and the tau neutrino. 
and all of our leptons have a charge of uh, negative one or zero. Um, but of course, the quarks, they have those, char those uh, values that are a third of a charge. Now, why do we call it an elementary charge if, um, if we have things that have charges that are less than the elementary charge, like quarks? Well, quarks only exist in pairs or in triplets. So um, the charge is still elementary. Uh, it's just that uh, um, when, we, when we mix up these pairs or triplets of our quarks, um, uh, each of those individual quarks would have, uh, um, would have uh, elementary charges that are a third of what they, what they possibly are. And then on the table seven, you have the bosons. Um, and I need you to add one to this as well. Uh, in fact, I want you to add a little bit more to this table. So when your textbook was made, the Higgs boson was uh, only hypothesized. Now we know it exists. So for the bosons, um, I want you to write down uh, a, new, um, uh, a new column. So write down the name um, and then another column uh, uh, that states um, whether it's a vector or a scalar boson. So the photon is a vector photon. Sorry, the photon is a vector boson and it deals with interactions between the um, electromagnetic force. So it's the force carrier for electromagnetic force. The uh, W and Z bosons are vector bosons, and they are um, carriers of the weak nuclear force. And then the gluons, there are eight different types. You do not need to know them. They are carriers of the strong nuclear force, and they are, of course, vector bosons as well. What I want you to add to this table is the Higgs boson. The Higgs boson is a scalar boson. And the Higgs boson um, provides mass to other particles. So it's not a force necessarily. Um, it's more of an interaction. So uh, in, in where it says force, write down that it provides mass to other particles. So um, with all of that, I want to talk about, this is going to be the end of the lecture. Uh, in the end of the course, but for this lecture, I do want you to um, uh, to do some additional work, um, as well as the questions that are assigned for this topic. Um, I want you to copy down tables one, two, six, and seven from section twelve point six. Uh, I want you to define these terms: quark, antiquark, antiparticle, hadron, baryon, meson. Fermion, lepton, and boson. So again, uh, copy down tables 1, 2, 6, and 7 from this section, 12.6, and then write down some definitions for quark, antimatter, antiparticle, hadron, baryon, meson, fermion, lepton, and boson. So you've been, you're being provided with a lot of material. Um, uh, this is going to be a very kind of wordy test, uh, so um, please make sure that you study it all and that you uh, read it uh, more than once so that you're ready for the test. I don't want you to be reading this the first time when you're doing your test.